For today's project, I'm removing this uh, pump and pressure tank. This was this goes to the cistern. It used to be this house used to be only cistern, and this would feed the house right through here. And they they brought in uh, city water, which is down low. But, you know, the funny thing is, this is still hooked up. I think the guy, I was told the guy didn't want city water, but his wife talked him into it. So my guess is, he says, well, hook it up so I can still use my cistern if the city water turns bad or something. So he can shut off a valve and, and shut off the city water and use cistern. But I think this is completely illegal because... He could back feed into the city water. He could back feed his sister and water into the city water, in theory. But at any rate, I'm going to cut it out so it won't be illegal anymore. But, uh, and it's been off, it's off. But one other thing that's interesting so this comes from the sister, and it's got a pressure gauge on it. So there's 15 about 15 pounds of pressure here from the cistern and uh, so rather than I'm going to have to cut that and cap it rather than have water spew all over for an undetermined amount of time I'm going to uh, pump out the cistern if I could get that pipe dry I'd like to sweat the a cap on it but uh, possibly sweat on a threaded fitting actually there's already a threaded fitting on there I'm not sure how I'm going to do it at this point shark bite is the easy obvious easy button but even you know there's somewhat of a risk when you go to cut it so you're going to have to cut the pipe once or as soon as you as soon as you cut through the pipe it's going to start leaking until you get it all the way cut through then you're maybe going to have to cut it again because you won't have space to put that shark bite in. Meanwhile, the water's coming out. I don't know. I got this two in it, two inch pump. I'm going to just pump out this cistern. And uh, sort of do it, do it the safe way, I guess you could say. And uh, then I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to hook this one up to this, back up to this sister, and I'll show you there's pipes. See, there was a, a box on the wall here where you could go into the sister or you could divert, and that goes to the sister. I think I'm going to go ahead and hook this one back up to the sister and let it run in. Now, I've had some problems with water damage. But it's more over here, and there's a pipe here that goes to the cistern behind that. I've got this covered up so it doesn't uh, get rain. And there's a pipe over here. Now, I had thought possibly this pipe here was leaking and causing the water damage, but. I'm not sure. At any rate, I don't plan on hooking that up. But there's a, w a window well here. I think that's really, that was directing water down. I think that's really what caused the damage. But I still don't plan on hooking up either this one. Although it'd be convenient if I could hook this one up to the cistern. And it's a damn short run. If I, if I just was sure that no water escaped into the towards the house, you know. At any rate, my problem now is to pump out. This is an enormous cistern, incidentally, but it's not full. And uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it very much. I'm not going to drop this camera. I hope. It's got about 16 inches of water in it. So another thing is, this is a Harbor Freight pump. There's two more things I want to talk about. And the main thing is, this hose here, this red hose, this intake, is full of air. 
one end is sitting in the water this end down here but otherwise it's full of air so how is this pump going to be able to pull it pull that water up well I don't know but it does so but you have to prime it you prime the pump by doing this but this doesn't fill that hose up with water this just fills it this part up with water and there's actually a check valve so the water can't run down this red hose it can run out this it can run out this hose so I can't fill it all the way up it seemed to fill up but it just ran it just ran out that hose but anyway this is all I have to do and uh, and then I have to pull it started obviously and it'll somehow pull that water up take a couple tries. Oh shoot, I heard something. It might have been there. It might have been there. It doesn't gush right away. It dribbles at first. I don't know how it works, honestly. I don't see how. Because if it was a vacuum pump, I could see. But it's not a vacuum pump, it's a water pump. So I don't know how it can pump air enough to make that water. Now where's it going? It doesn't act like it's filling up. Well, let's try it again. It almost, it almost acted like it was Right there, ready to go anyway. Turn it on. Choke it. About 250 bucks, I was afraid, I think. Strict as hell. Oof! You got a kink in it. Straighten out these kinks. Oof! We make a little bit of a mess on my field, but. Eventually it'll run down the hill. I could hook another pipe up to it, but I kind of didn't want to strain the pump that much. Put another hose on it. It's kind of a lot of water. I had thought, you know, if if uh, it would be a good fire protection system if the fireman could dip a, had a vacuum pump, pumper truck that could pull a vacuum, pump it out of that cistern. But I don't know, I haven't heard about such a thing. They'd have to get close enough to do it. We get that right here where this lawnmower is. Ay, ay, ay. There's just a little water in it now. Where's the? That's four inches maybe. 
See, it goes way back. This thing's huge. And uh, I almost dropped my keys in here. I was fooling around. So now, let's go see if that pressure gauge is reduced or not. It's not reduced. So either my theory's wrong or that pressure gauge is stuck. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It wiggles. It's basically staying in the same place. So, you know one thing that just occurs to me? I could probably take that little line off here and see if there was any pressure. The other thing I was thinking about was um, drilling a hole in this copper, see how much pressure there is. And then I could just uh, put a piece of rubber on it with um, with uh, radiator clamp. I could also loosen this and see how much leaks out. See how bad it leaks out. I think I'll do that. That or this little plastic thing. So this is really what I should have done from the get-go. Have you ever heard a song that says been that way from the get-go? Anyway, uh, put these saddle valves on there, which I could have done it the way I said, but this way is really convenient. I'll put this saddle valve on there, I'll pierce the line, then I'll open the valve and I'll see how much pressure is there. And this I expect to have a little pressure here, and but then I can just drain it off, drain the pressure off first. Uh, it might take a five gallons, I don't know, something like that. This, I can't really drain the pressure off, but I can see how much pressure I'm up against, and uh, so that'll be helpful. So I've got it clamped down there pretty tight. Let's see if we can pierce this. This is how you do a refrigerator water. Feel like a yeah, there is water there. Okay, so there's water, but there's not a lot of pressure. Alright. So I have a couple of choices. I could keep pumping out that I could keep pumping out that cistern. Or I've got a shark bite. I could just cut it kind of fast, have some towels here, and uh I'll tell you there's one thing, I'll tell you what I might do first. That check valve might not be, might be leaking. So let's go ahead and pierce this other one first and see if we got any pressure up here. You know, I think that other one was returned because I noticed they were 180 from each other in the package. And this has a secondary package, which that other one didn't have this secondary package. I think what I'm going to have to do is gather up some courage and get my shark bite and get my sawzall cut, or I can use a copper cutter probably, and cut it here and cut it here. I can kind of cut it through once and get a bunch of towels and stuff and uh, then jab, jam that spark shark bite on there. Nice if I had an alternative in case that shark bite has a problem. I decided to try, try and pump it out a little more. Um, I took that filter cap off. Just running out that hose. I took that filter cap off so just the bare hose it'll be able to pump it out a little deeper or a little shallower or whatever. And uh, they have a you know, they have a commercial that says uh, hi uh, history favors the brave, but I don't think that's true. I think the fortune favors the brave. 
fortune favors the well prepared, organized, and smart. Well, it's about, it's about as low as I can get it two inches unless I go to another pump. You know, it occurs to me too, this thing might be slanted towards this end. There might still be a foot of water down here. And the pipe runs off here, probably. There might still be a foot of water in there, near the pipe. I think I'll, I don't know, I've got another pump that'll get it down to a quarter inch. I mean, that's still a lot of water. So this pump will take it down to a quarter inch, but it'll take a long time. Yeah, I think that made a difference. It's not very much pressure. I could, I could stop it by shoving a rag in there. I guess that would be plan B if the shark bite doesn't work. Shove a, shove a rag in there. And a bunch of towels. I've got that pump on. I think I'll leave that pump. I'll leave that pump run. What's this one doing? I forgot about this one. It's just dripping. I'm kind of going to guess that that's coming from here and not from here. So, in other words, the first thing to do would be to cut this off and, cl and, and uh, clamp this off and then, and then do the other one. Uh, but there's going to be, yeah, I just, I just soon not make a big mess. That's the main thing. And see if I drip water. Probably water's going to go behind the wall there no matter what I do. I thought about getting some sandbags. I do have a drain right there. But it, ten it doesn't want to hit the drain. It wants to run out there and run into the room. So I thought I could put sandbags. I don't know. I'm going to leave that pump run for a while. That didn't take near as long as I thought it would. I think I'll move the pump a little bit, kind of swing it, because I'm guessing it's deeper as you go, as you go that way. I'm guessing it gets deeper. I think I'll swing that pump out there and towards the middle, try and pump a little more out, and then I think I've got it nailed. Well, that's funny now this is filling up. That wasn't that full, was it? A minute ago. Or was it? Let's see what this is doing. I don't think I I can't get any more water out of it, so there's only two choices. There's really only one choice. I've got to cut it. And I can have a I'll get some towels, I'll fill this area up with towels. And then I'll uh, get a rag I can jam up in there. I'm going to have to cut it twice to get enough space to work. I can't really twist this. Unless I cut this first. <coughs> Maybe I'll take that cap off and see what happens. There it comes out. Alright, what am I going to do? Seems like water wants to come out of this cap a lot more than it wants to come out of that. So there's pressure here. Which doesn't surprise me because there's a bladder here. But what I what makes me unhappy is it's really not coming out here. Which I could drain it 
easily into that bucket but that saddle valve isn't working right probably that rubber's mashed up maybe if I release the screw a little bit and then the other thing that worries me is if that one's not working right either and there's really more pressure on that which I kind of doubt but something to worry about well that did go down that was showing five pounds of pressure ah. here's what happened for some reason I didn't pierce that I didn't pierce it very well I'm not sure why It's not a lot of pressure, but there might be, I don't know, there might be a few gallons of water there. Well, I was fooling around with that one pipe and the, this one, and it popped off. Water went in, everywhere. But I've got it almost, I got the gauge almost down to zero. I'm beginning to think this is actually the pressure of the tank, not the pressure of the cistern. Although it's odd that it would be on this side. I'm gonna take this I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna jam this hose in it and then I'm going to try and fill up these two buckets. And that there should be more water. That should be all the water that should be in there wrap this rag around it to keep it uh, in fact I think I'll whip it off jam this rag in there and then I'll try and put that in I'll try and put this in thing I want was wondering is this leaking it looks like looks like I could cut it now and uh, it'd be all right I better do it before I change my mind and then once I cut this yeah the other thing I didn't know is if it's gonna come out through the through the uh, from the inch but once I cut this I could kind of release I cut this then I, when I cut that, I can move the thing out of the way and work on that. Because water is going to come out of that. But it's not a lot of pressure. You cut before I was ready, but I got my shark bite now. What's that sound? I don't know. I don't know what that sound is. But I got to finish cutting it, I guess, and put that shark bite on there. Maybe get a rag for a second. Oh, I got sandpaper too to clean it up. Actually, it looks like I'll be able to sweat it. Most of the water's coming out of that tank. That's what that funny sound is. I'll sweat that, but then now I kind of can't hardly return that snake bite, but I guess I'll have it for later. You know, I don't quite understand this because I've this tank's got to have a check valve to keep the pressure from going back into the cistern. But, uh, maybe the check valve is relaxed. I don't know what's going on. Or maybe there's a certain amount of cistern water before you get to the check valve. 
I don't know how this pump works anyway. It sticks in here, so the cistern water comes down here, and then it pumps it up here. There must be a bladder to maintain air pressure, to maintain pressure, so it's just can't pressurize water very well. Oh crap, I gotta empty that. I was able to melt that off, heat that off, so uh, now I've got a nice clean place to attach. So I fooled around with this all day, but I finally got it. That gauge does work. It gauge, I believe it was the uh, cistern pressure too that it was gauging. So, and uh, so I put this, uh, so I sweated those threads on and now I can cap it. And someday, I'm planning on using that cistern again. I mean, fill, letting it fill with water again. So I'd like to put a gauge on here. I don't know that I'd ever need the water in here. But I'd like to put a, a gauge on here, a pressure gauge. That'd be fun. It'd be a type of uh, fullness. Now I've also got to get this i got to get this out of here. And it's kind of a problem. It's pressurized with house with city water. And uh, I guess I could do it here. I could cut it off there. See, all along here is a problem. I guess I, I was thinking I could ca cut it out, cap it here. But I guess what I can do... I'm far enough from the wall here. I have these little cutters. Let me show you. This is a real little one. This one might be too small for this pipe. But uh, I have a little bigger one. See, it can cut all the way around. And then uh, what, I, what I'll have to do is drain the whole system. I'll have to shut this ma main off. And then I'll have to drain the whole system in order to get dry enough, unless I just do a short bite. But I still kind of have to, uh, I still want to get most of the water out of there so it doesn't go all over. So, um, that's all the plumbing for today, I guess.